Good morning, everyone. Peace, peace be with you. Today, the LBGDQ plus God, religious abuse, and what I saw when I was dead. Welcome to Not Church. Mysticism, no doctrine, no dogma. Hi, I'm called Peter Panagore a peace channeler polished from 40 years of Kriya Yoga and centering prayer practice with a master's of divinity degree from Yale, focusing in the classics of Western mysticism and a spiritual counselor. Book a time with me at peterpanagore.love. I'm a lifetime natural born mystical misfit longing for home, being here now with multiple theophanies theophanies or mystical visions by grace from creator over the whole of my life. Not Church is about global human mysticism, spoken with a Christian accent. Not Church is a twofold experiment. First, it's the public exploration of mysticism, deconstruction, reconstruction, or rediscovery or recovery of remembrance of self, higher self. The second is a growing community of experienced mystics gathering a community by providing a safe space for discussion of your personal mystical experience and more in Mystic Tea Salon, which follows at the top of the next hour on Zoom. Look at the details below. Jimi Hendrix asked, are you experienced? If spirit led you here, then likely yes. And tune in next week to find out what's a mystical experience and did I have one? Meaning, did you have one? This week, the LBGTQ plus God, what I saw when I was dead. But first, where two or three are gathered, I am there, said Jesus. The universal Christ is, was, and always will be here right now, always now, for nothing exists without its divine presence in the here and now. So call the nameless by any name you want. Names cannot contain it with a capital I on it. It lives within you and is you within us, between us, among us, shared is a multiple of light when we gather together with intent. So intend your eye to be single and your body will be filled with light. It's, it's built in and made to be shared by getting out of the way, getting the ego out of the way. The only one barring me from getting to God is me. I'm in my own way. And group practice that we do here, we're going to do this in a minute. The group practice shares the light between us. But you don't have to take my word for it. Find out for yourself. We start each week here uh, by raising our prana through chanting Om, vibrating our body, and then we go within into our interior temples of our hearts through heart centered meditation prayer with a chant, anyone you want, a prayer chant, letting your prayer ride on your breath like a, like a dragonfly on your palm. Check out the instructional videos described below. So let's begin. All right. So I'm going to begin with Om, and I'm going to leave my mask off today. Close my eyes, feet flat on the floor, hands on my lap. Back straight, full breath into lungs and abdomen during OM and adjust into your belly during centering practice. Here we go.
from your third eye. Relax. Inhale into your second chakra, down your spine. Center yourself in silence. The LBGT plus God, what I saw when I was dead. I have a spiritual message for the LBGTQI community who have suffered trauma, rejection, oppression, hatred, violence, imprisonment, beatings, and death, all because of religion. We're all born into the bodies that we have, and genders come with our DNA. We're not our bodies. We inhabit them. I begin this morning with a suicidal story of a young islander and his friend. So when I was a pastor on this island off the coast of Maine, there were five churches on the island. I handled two of them, and as an aside, they hated each other and shared a pastor. They love each other now, and they joined together. But on the far end of the island in a little village called Sunset was another church, and the preacher there preached against homosexuality in a strong, strong way. One night, at around 11 o'clock at night, there was a pounding on our back door of the parsonage. And I came downstairs in my pajamas with my bathrobe on and found at the back door a young man and a young woman. And she said to me, she was my babysitter for my kids. And she said to me, my friend here is suicidal because his parents found out he's gay and the church and the parents want to throw him out. And we sat at the kitchen table for hours, and we talked, and I talked him out of suicide. I showed him, I told him, I, I helped him understand that he was perfect the way he was made, and there was nothing wrong with them, with him. That what was wrong was the church's perspective. And that night, his friend and I, we saved his life. He's not the first gay friend of mine who faced suicide. And I know in the LBGT plus community, many of you have faced the same thing. Just a year out of high school, my friend Phil killed himself because he was so abused by so many people because he was gay. This was in the 70s. I didn't understand it then, but after I died, I understood it well. So what did I learn about gender when I was dead and why was I able to help this young man? I was in a state of non-being and union with oneness who has no gender. That's it. God has no gender, is above gender and beyond gender, with no form and no being that can possibly be described in words, and has nothing to do with flesh. 
When I was dead, when I was dead, my soul, my consciousness, my higher self, my energy form, my Atman, myself with a capital S, name it whatever you want to, whatever comforts you, myself was no thing. I had no thingness. I had slipped out of my biology, untethered. My gender assignment that I was infused with in birth is a function of my brain and the action of my physical body. At death and timelessness, I lost my physical body, my sexuality, and my gender identity. I lost my identity as Peter and all that went with it. My mortal body is male and dominantly cisgender, but not wholly so. But me, I'm not Peter. I live in this body with the, the DNA that I have and my sexuality and my gender is part of my physical makeup. But gender doesn't matter to God at all because the all-powerful creator made you as you are, made each of us as we are with love and light and goodness. Love above is genderless. No thingness attaches to the divine above religion, above doctrine, above dogma, above physicality. No gender, genderless, ungendered. And yet, creator makes all genders, is all genders, because out of the divine self comes all that there is. And it is good. It is good. And it is good. Doesn't sunlight, does, does sunlight have gender when it warms your face? Does light have gender? Does love have gender? Does love have gender? Does kindness or humility or charity or compassion, do any of them have gender? Or do they know only love? Love, no matter what, no matter who, is love. Love is love. And when the time comes for you to shed your skin, you'll see this for yourself. You don't need to take my word for it. A church, some church, big church, historic church, perpetuated and perpetuates wickedness and their oppression of the LBGTQIA community condemning, abusing, wounding, breaking, rejecting, and worse, causing good hearts to reject God, to reject spirituality because of the trauma, because of the spiritual abuse syndrome, because of the religious abuse syndrome. It's real, and it causes real psychological, physical, emotional, and spiritual damage. And it, why? Why? Because of hatred, because of power. Hatred causes this harm. The misguided church made Jesus into the judge, and they used that invention to concentrate wicked power into their own hands, condemning people for who they are. And Jesus himself asked, Who may be judge? Meaning, in context, I'm not the judge, but the church answers his question with, we made you judge. And look at the violence to lives that they have caused and cause. When I moved to that island, within a week, one of the deacons came to me to tell me that her son, Woody, had just moved back home from New York City and was dying of AIDS. And she didn't know me. And she said to me, will you come and visit him? Do you think homosexuality is a sin? I said, of course I'll come to visit him. And no, it's no sin. And I visited Woody for months. And I had to keep his secret on the island 
because nobody knew, and she feared that they would hate him. He escaped island life to live in the city in order to be who he was, and when he came home, having been raised in the church, he found sanctuary with me. He found a welcome home for himself, and he found his way back into his spirituality that was nearly beaten out of him. And he died a peaceful death, a hard death, but a peaceful death, and home he went. In those days, the LBGT plus community was so put upon that they all left the church if they had to, or they hid. Nowadays, that still goes on in places. And it's time for it to stop. Why? Because, well, we'll come to that. We'll come to what the Bible says in a few minutes. I've known that God is genderless for 40 years. It's not like it's something that I thought through. I saw this. I saw that the no thing, nothing of all power has no gender and does not give a hoot about yours. It's wisdom that was given to me to share. And I'm now sharing it in a very direct way. Homosexuality in all its forms is beautiful. Asexuality is beautiful. Transgender is beautiful. Bisexuality is beautiful. Cis sexuality is beautiful. All of these genders are beautiful because love is love. After my first NDE, all of my beliefs in religion, culture, meaning, society, politics, gender politics, history, language went poof or poofta, phased out of existence as if they had never been there, gone. I am not now and have not been a believer in the Bible since then or in religion not in doctrine, not in dogma, not even in the deification of Jesus, especially not that. The man the church deified against his wishes and then used as a bludgeon. I know none of this is real because none of it is lasting. And none of those things that I named culture and politics, they're not real. They don't last, and all of them are tiny, itsy-bitsy compared to the size of the universe and our insignificant, my insignificant place in it. They're constructs. We made them up. There is only one real with a capital L. <laughs> That's for love. There's only one real with a capital R. Love above is the real it's the isness of reality, and it has no gender. And gender exclusion is a human construct born of religion, woven into society, and used as a weapon of exclusion, repression, oppression, and power. It causes trauma. And there are millions in the LBGTQIA community, wounded by this abuse and violence in the name of power, in the name of control. And trauma is the result. Spiritual rejection on their part and soulful isolation. Those are the consequences. And God has no gender and doesn't give a hoot about yours. God cares if you care. God cares if you love. God cares if you're kind or charitable or joy giving or peacemaking or goodness doing. God doesn't care who you love or who your body needs to love. Human beings are so cruel to anyone outside their made-up tribes and moralistic judgments. Who made Jesus judge? Guess. There's only one tribe, the human tribe. One people, 
one planet, all colors, all genders, one light of goodness living inside us, binding us all together to our original goodness. Original goodness is who you are. Let those who have eyes to see the light inside themselves see the light inside the eyes of everyone they meet. Human bodies are made with many genders, and God has no gender and loves us exactly as we are made because God makes us be. No divine presence, no existence. So, what about the Bible point of view on the subject? Well, here's a brief summary, deconstructive summary, of the bigoted weapons abusive churches have used misguidedly to make themselves feel righteous. The stories of Sodom and Gomorrah, Genesis 19, and the Levites' concubine, jo uh, Judges 19, are not about homosexuality. They are about sexual violence. They are. And the ancient Near East's stigma. Let's not lie with a man, Leviticus 18 and 20, is in the context of a society anxious about their health, continuing family lineages, and retaining their national distinction. They just didn't want sperm to go anywhere but to eggs. In the New Testament, in the 1 Corinthians 6 and 1 Timothy 1, the argument was about sexual exploitation. It's about sexual exploitation of older people against younger people, of older men against younger men, of older men against boys. Sexual exploitation. It's not about homosexuality. It's about power. It's, uh, it's part of Paul's broader indictment against self-centeredness. It's against self-centeredness, driven by a desire to consume rather than love. Violence, exploitation, self-centeredness, and the desires to consume others rather than love them, that all sounds like traits of violent abusers to me. Paul was against violent abusers. Me too. Sounds strangely like how the moralistic church has behaved toward the LBGT plus community for centuries, don't you think? Now, just to be clear, Creator made you as you are and loves you for who you are. Infinity, love, beauty, Creator, all-powerful, I say for the seventh time, and neither does I inhabit this body. It's a rental. I'm not in control of its construction. It's a rental just like yours. You get the sexuality, the gender that you're born with. And there's flexibility in that for some people. And there's terror in it for others. I'd like to remove that terror, at least here in Notch. I'd like people to be able to be who they are, as they are, with their spirituality. And just because you got rejected by the church doesn't mean that God rejects you. The people may have rejected you. Their culture may have rejected you. But the divine does not give a hoot about your gender, only cares about your love, only cares about your selflessness, only cares about you. So peace be with you. Peace be with you all. And the genderless God bless you with love in the physical world as you need it, love with skin on. I'd love to hear from you on this one in the comments. I see the chats going, and I want to thank everybody for the super chat this morning. I see. I thank you all.
And if you stuck with me thus far this morning, I thank you. And if I touched your heart or made you think, then please subscribe and click like. And if not church and all the mission work that I do inspires you or gives you hope or meaning, then please join our ministry by becoming a supporting partner like you all did this morning with Super Chat at any level by giving any way you can and when you can at peterpanico.love. And you can look for the spinning red heart in the middle of the page and it's PayPal, Patreon, Venmo, Zelle, and recurring. Recurring really helps, but every little bit helps me too to continue speaking out because you know I'm going to get attacked this week. I got attacked last week. I'm going to get attacked again this week. And that's totally cool because they can't hurt me because I'm not from here. I know to whom I belong. I know where I'm going. I know where I'm from. I know that I'm not in my body. I know that I'm not my gender. I've enjoyed my gender, but I'm not my gender. Ours is a partnership sending God's universal love message to as many millions as possible, freeing minds, inflaming hearts, encouraging mystical conversation in the public square, and bringing the power of heaven for life and soul healing to earth together. So thanks again for being here. FYI, um, I appreciate you very much. Mystic Tea Salon follows at the top of the next hour. And you can find the link below and the details. Uh, we talk about, it's a safe space for talking about mysticism and the practical world. And if you need and you want to talk to me sometime, you can book an appointment at peterpanagoy.love. And I specialize in mystical and deep spiritual conversations, grief and pastoral care. And that's that. So I want to thank you all. And I'm going to slip over here to the chat and uh, see what's going on. Thank you. I see a whole bunch of people with the super chat. I want to thank you very much. And Wowzer, thanks a lot. Thank you, Emily. You just popped up. Thank you very much. And Kristen, I saw that go by. And, and Deanna, thank you. You're welcome. I'm trying to do my job here. I'm trying to help. I'm trying to tell the truth. I'm trying to get past all the moralism and the moralistic people to just let human beings be human beings who they are and love each other as they do and stop this craziness. It's craziness. It's all this, an attempt to concentrate power. It's all an attempt to concentrate power in the hands of few, a few to be in control of everything. Well, they can't control me because I'm not from here. Nor are you. Thank you, Deanna. He appreciates your money. He's here for the money, says Rez. I am not here for the money, Rez Parvis. If I was here for the money, I would have done what I was going to do with my life and built skyscrapers with my family. <laughs> I would have built schools and factories and houses. I chose a life of pastoral care, and I too deserve to earn a living. But if you think I'm here for the money, you know nothing about me. I encourage you to stick around to find out. Thanks, man, for bringing that up. Connie, thank you. I'm gay and a past Oldest brother of five, as well as my level of consciousness is different. Amen to that, cactus flower. Amen to that. Oh, dear Rez, what you say, you say to yourself. <laughs> love you. Love the message. Thank you for sharing with the world, Java girl. Do not lay that projection psycho babble on me. Well, Rez, you don't have to stick around, man. I'm not here to convince you. I'm not trying to talk you into anything. You believe what you want to believe, you're going to find out the day you die. And I'm totally cool with that. So peace and love, brother. Peace and love. Peace to all. Thank you, Peter. Great message. I have also worked and known some who have taken their lives because of culture's judgment, Victor. Yeah. It's abuse. 
spiritual abuse. You preach a satanic New World Order message. Hey, thanks, man, for putting me in the class of a whole world thing. I preach truth of God's love. God's love is what I preach. Love, 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 love. I wish I could break into song like the Beatles. Love, love, love. Do, 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 do. Take down Super Chat to prove it. Oh, big a picture. Just don't participate. I don't have to prove anything to you or to anyone else. I belong to God. I'm not here to prove anything. God loves you as you are. You and Rez both. You both have goodness in you. You both are made of light and love, just like the rest of us. Uh, the Father has revealed this to me. I am on to you, Pete. Oh, I work for the New World Order. Oh, gosh, I'm part of a conspiracy now. I work for God. My life shows this. Anyway, I love the world. John Lennon, what a wonderful soul. Love is all you need. Um, let's see what I can do here to these folks. I need moderators. I do need moderators. You don't have to respond to trolls. Uh, trolls are trolls are trolls. Tribal security underlines hating the other for a sense of safety. Religion has no monopoly here, but a powerful enforcer of it. Amen to that. GPS, thank you. All are created equally beautiful. All are loved equally. No big a picture here. He is not. Thanks, Connie. Um, you are a spark of love. Yes, you can click on our names and make people you trust moderators. Oh, can I do that? I'm going to add you as a moderator, JT, because you just asked me to. There you go, brother. Um, thank you. So, my friends, um, I knew this was controversial. And uh, I'm going to leave up all the, the things that are uh, up there that are attacking me because I have no need to take them down. Uh, great, not sermon, Peter. Thanks, Jim. What's your sense of whether people eat food or have sex in heaven? Uh, I didn't have a body. I didn't have a mouth. I didn't eat any food. The weird thing is he's eating here. I have to eat food here. It's totally this bizarre experience that I have to fuel this physical self. Uh, in heaven, I had no body. I, I didn't need sex. I, I was an ecstatic I was in the orgasm of the divine presence of beauty and love, truth and unity, understanding, wisdom and knowledge. Uh, I was in adoration. I, I was in, in beauty itself. I needed nothing more than that energy itself. Nothing more. So I know that that's the place I went to. I know not everybody does, but that's where I went. Um, thanks, JT. Appreciate it. Uh, I feel like these people need to be educated. The fact that Rez is here means he's curious. Yes, I think so too. Um, or or else um, people just like to show up to attack, to, to uh, like silence, alternative voices. I imagine that there are a lot of people out there who have deified Jesus and love to hate homosexuality. Keep it to yourself then. Don't beat people up. Don't wound them spiritually and psychologically. Don't share your hatred. I don't hate you guys. The positive energy here is awesome. I can feel the love. People are afraid of any Jesus that goes against their own idea of him. Yeah, that's true. That's totally true. Um, hey, Nancy, I want to thank you very much for your gift this morning. And uh, Deanna, again, thank you. You know, Rez and, and uh, whoever that was, that other person, if you go to church, you know your pastor's paid. You know he or she, well, probably he and 
because I'm guessing you don't go to a church that ordains women. Certainly not gay people. Thank you, Emily. It's the church's manipulation that has indoctrinated them. Yeah, their hearts are still good. Their souls are still fine. They're going to find out when they go. It's all good. Always has been, always will be. Divine love is so much greater than humanity's capacity. It's infinite and in it's forgiveness and mercy and their forgiveness and their mercy. Yeah, I'm glad they're here. Uh, your connection is unstable. Hmm. I hope I'm still connected. Well, my friends, um, I'd love to continue this conversation. If you have comments or questions, that would be great. If not, I may uh, end this a little early today and get ready for not church, uh, for Mystic Tea Salon. I'd love to continue the conversation here or there. Um, hey, Sylvia. Sylvia, Sylvia, Sylvia. Somebody said, Sylvia, I love you. And I'm trying to figure out if it's my friend, Sylvia, who's videos are fabulous. Anyway, the best Protestant pastor I ever knew was a Jewish lesbian. Amen to that Ursa Major. The best Protestant pastor, pastor I ever knew was a Jewish lesbian. I loved her. Our death watch experiences have been the greatest service to our creator, Brother Ed. Yep. You know who you know who were spiritual disruptors who the authorities couldn't stand? Jesus and Paul. Do you know who didn't reference whose primary reference to their spiritual experience was on the interior? Jesus and Paul. Do you know who were disruptors? Jesus and Paul. Do you know who stood against the laws and the rules of hatred? Jesus and Paul. Beloved, not discriminative with love for each of us. So why would we? Exactly. Thank you, Karen, Elise. In heaven, can you experience a body and carry on life in an expanded way? You do carry on life in an expanded way. Um, I'm sure that my higher self, most of which did not come back with me here, is experiencing my body right now. Living in me right now. So yes, I think so. But my divine self, my whole self, my consciousness when I was there, it was so much bigger than living, so much bigger than living a life. I was unconcerned about my physical life. It was gone and passed and didn't need it. I had so much more. There's so much more. It's hard to understand how much more treasure of love awaits you, us, when we die. The body, as wonderful as it is, it is, as wonderful as creation is, you won't need it. You probably won't even miss it. I didn't. Didn't need it at all. Those who condemn, I believe, is a cry for love and soul growth lesson to be learned. Amen, Doreen. I, I'll go with that. Hey, Rob, sorry you're late too, brother. Um, you're out in the sunshine over there in Wales. I'm glad you're here now. It's not hot over here on this side of the pond. Thank you, says Peggy. You're welcome. Java girl got it. Peg SKZD. I don't know what that means. Wisdom. Java girl, thank you. Victor. It was so important to have someone teach me when reading a sacred, sacred book what should be read literally and what should be read symbolically. That's the trick. That's the trick. And so this week I've been reading Richard Rohr, The Universal Christ, for the past two weeks, actually. And I'll probably read it again. It's a great book to deconstruct the Bible, to take a new view of the universal Christ, he calls it, the man Jesus, the inhabiting universal Christ in the body of Jesus. And he deconstructs and rips up and, and reconstructs a lot of scripture around mysticism that's been misinterpreted through literalists by literalists. It's, it's, 
totally worth reading if you're interested in that kind of stuff. We think we are a big speck spinning on this Earth ship. We are the planet itself is tiny. <laughs> the star system we're in is tiny. Even our galaxy is small compared to most galaxies. We are nothing here. I am nothing. You you can speak for yourself. I am nothing here. I don't matter at all. And the cosmic scale of everything, nothing. I don't matter one single bit. And neither does anything of my culture, of my society or they don't what matters is love the only thing that's eternal is love earth definitely isn't eternal lasts a long 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 time but humanity you know we're much younger than earth and we last a long time but not as long as earth or as the universe and uh i definitely can't wait for my time to end i am going to wait but i can't wait for it so i can shed this body and my gender and my sexuality and my physicality and all the rest of it that goes along with it and go home to the divine being of love. Thanks, John, brother. Appreciate that. Um, do you continue to have metaphysical experiences, Don? Yes, I do. I've had them my whole life. I had them as a child, had them through high school and in college. I've had them after my near-death experience on a regular, pretty regular basis. I mean, I have the daily little ones, but I have major big ones too. Uh, why i seem to be born this way i seem to have a job but also i spend my life in meditation i kind of thin the veil um but yes i do richard Rohr's work is really awesome i've taken some of his classes says java girl cool uh, if all church representatives were like you peter the world would be a more peaceful place thanks pond lily uh, i appreciate that um it would be a much better place to live for lots of people Hi, Peter. I heard you the other day that before you're born, your soul chooses whom you want your parents as your parents. If this is true, then why do some children have such hatred toward the parents they choose? I, I don't know. I mean, that wasn't my experience, Debbie. I, I don't know if I chose my parents or my family. I know that I chose the life that I'm living now. Uh, during my near-death experience, I chose the course I was going to, the path I was going to take. Um, I mean, if you expand that, you know, from why would anybody choose to live at all when we enter into a life of suffering? I mean, the world is full of suffering. And if your parents are part of that suffering, that's just a part of it. There's a whole lot more suffering that goes along with it. So I think um, maybe we have some autonomy. Maybe we have some willpower. Maybe we can choose who our parents are. Well, the things that I don't understand in spirituality like that. I, I don't have an answer for that. I, I continue to aim my heart at the divine oneness of being and let all that take care of itself. I mean, I work on my relationship with my parents and my own psychological upbringing with it, whatever traumas that I happen to have. And I've gone through therapy and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I wasn't in an abusive situation either. My parents were not abusers, violent abusers. Why would someone choose that life? Why would someone choose to, to live in uh, a war-torn nation? Why would choose someone choose to live in abject poverty uh, with disease? Uh, I think it's not as simple as some people think it is. I think that nature has a lot of power. And when we inhabit our body, I didn't like design my DNA. Did I choose my parents? I chose my parents on my way back, my, my first near-death experience. I chose to come back to help them. Did I choose them in the first place? I don't know. I don't really care. You, um, that's not to say that it's not important to you, but um, I'm more interested in solving the problem rather than um, or getting away from the abuse and rebuilding myself. I, I, I wasn't an abused person with my parents, but I would think that it would, would be more important to deal with the traumas that you have uh, through therapeutic means and spiritual growth than trying to figure out whether you chose your parents or not. Because knowing whether you chose your parents or not, the only thing that'll change is maybe you get an understanding of maybe you were there for their benefit. And that might be true. You might be there for their benefit. Um, but that's a little, that's kind of, it's above my grade. I don't really know the answer to that. Be love, 
beloves of my beloved Belinda, thank you. Good to see you here today, all the way from Tunisia. Your soul needs to learn certain things that we can't know here on earth. That's true. Um, there is learning that happens here, but there's learning that happens after death too. Yes, yeah, certainly spiritual lessons need to be learned. So many of us are recovering from our childhoods. This desperately needs to be changed. Needs to change. Yeah. Well, a, a, a lot of the a lot of the abuse, okay, at least in Christendom, comes out of the sanction of the male being the head of the household and everyone subservient to the male, which is a popular um, belief system in evangelical literalism and the spare the rod, spoil the child kind of baloney. Healing ourselves is paramount to ascending, being healed by the divine, by getting out of the way and dealing with your trauma and getting out of your own way that way too. When I had my out-of-body experience looking down at my outer shell of a body, I kept quiet about it for 24 years until I saw your NDE videos. It made me realize your soul can leave your body from Rob. Rob, totally true. I wondered that about you. Thank you for sharing that with us this morning. I appreciate you telling us that. Love you, Kristen. Love you, Kristen, says Belinda. After multiple STEs, NDEs, and OBEs, I surrendered to the gravity of dying daily says Brother Ed. Eternal light of being, eternal being of light, peeling the onions so light of your soul can burn brighter. Amen to that. Hey, my friends, um, I love what you're saying. Bring it to Mystic Tea Salon today if you want to continue this conversation. I think I'm going to close this down in a minute or two. I had an experience as well that years later opened my eyes. Well, I'll keep it going. If you guys want to talk about that stuff, that's great. Um, after realizing other people had experiences too. Yeah, that's what we're doing here. We're trying to talk about mystical experiences so that everybody feels free to talk about their mystical experiences instead of living closeted as most of the LBGD plus community has lived for most of the centuries of Christendom. And now we're trying to bring that to help normalize that. We're helping normalize mystical experience. That's why we're, that's what we're doing here. And you can see the kind of resistance we get from the, um, resistance from the evangelical branch of the church um, when they, you know, call me a satanic person working in the new age, uh, whatever it was, conspiracy of global consciousness or whatever that thing was. Um, all because I'm talking about mysticism and direct experience. That's not allowed. <gasps> not allowed. Uh, la, real L with a capital L. Yep, real with a capital L, real love with a capital L. I love that line. Amen, brother. Thanks, John. Uh, love to all the family. Thanks to you. Same to you, Tamara. Tamara. All right. We got 10 minutes. Uh, I'm going to take a 10 minute break this morning before Mystic Tea Salon. You can find the link below and we'll see who shows up today. Well, it could be interesting. Don't know what's going to happen. Uh, see you there. Peace and love to everybody. Thank you for coming here today. And thanks for your support, uh, giving voice. And and one last thing, you know, the evangelical literalist right of oppressors of LBGTQ community plus uh, are well funded. That's why they have such a strong voice because they're well funded. They get to push their message. They're a minority. They push their message, and they get uh, a wider viewing. So thanks for funding me. I appreciate it a lot. All right, peace and love, everybody. Good day, everybody. See you soon at Mystic Peace Salon. See you next week. Thanks for being here. Peace and love.